What's up, everybody? It's Power Rankings Podcast, Power Ranking Show Short. I am your host, Elliot Harrison. I'm joined with Marcus Mosher. And I asked Marcus a question. Now, we were talking about, hey, what shorts are we going to do for this week? We actually did some work. And anyway, I, I thought, you know, Marcus studies the draft so much. I wanted to know the one prospect. I don't care what round it is, preferably uh, day one, day two, but of a guy that just isn't being talked about very much, either because of a injury or what maybe they went to a small school or maybe there's something else about the player and everybody's sleeping on this guy so i have no idea who it is so sir who did you come with who's the most least talked about good prospect in the 2023 draft i think it's houston wide receiver nathaniel tank dell now okay. here, here's the reason why he's not getting a lot of press and i've been Coming from Houston, I get it. It's a smaller school, right? It's not totally, you know, way it's not out. small, pretty, though. No, yeah. it's not small. He is small. Despite the name Tank Dell, uh, he is <laughs> five foot eight, 165 pounds. And I think for the most part, we just lump all these guys in together. Hey, Rondale Moore, Greg Dorch, Tavon Austin. And if you're five, eight, 160 pounds, what do we call you in the NFL? A gadget player, right? Yeah. But yeah. Tank Dow's not a gadget player. He's a legitimately good receiver. Over the last two years at Houston, 3,100 yards from scrimmage and 30 touchdowns. Went to the Senior Bowl. Nobody could cover him. Not He, he won every single rep. And I think the thing that I'm kind of starting to realize, Elliot, is with so many teams playing cover two and their safeties back, what you need is the guys that can win quickly underneath and make plays yeah. after the catch. I yeah. think that's where Tank Dell is going to work in the NFL. Well, a couple of things. Maybe we should call him Plastic Tank. You know, did you ever play a little plastic? Of course. Thanks. Yeah. Well, Army right. guys. Oh yeah. We, me and my brothers, did that all the time. We know some of them are still buried in uh, some yards across Dallas somewhere from the '80s or whatever. Um, but you know, I, I I like this because there have been a lot of small receivers who have been great players in the NFL. A lot of guys that didn't have huge size and there are guys mm -hmm. in the hall of fame that didn't have huge size either. Cause they were burners. I think cliff branch hall of fame player, Tommy McDonald, it had the best pair of hands of the mm -hmm. game's first 70 years, man. Um, there are a lot of guys um, and they're not all gadget players. No. Some of them are guys that can give you 1200 yards and can move the sticks for you. Now the, the disadvantage is the catch radius, right? Yes. They're not, they're not Mike Williams. They're not Alvin Harper. They can't jump out of the stadium. They're not always open when they're covered, but if they've got hops, that's a big bonus. So my first question to you is what was his vertical like? Uh, I think he had a 40 inch vertical at 165 pounds. That's, that's pretty good. man. It, okay. He's just one of these guys like now the, the 40 is not great. He ran a four, four, nine, but I'm telling you, watch that's the tape, still he, fast. You're right. And you watch the tape. He's the fastest guy of the field, but he plays fast. And it's just, I, I think the way that the NFL is going is get these guys, the ball as quick as you can and let them make the plays, right? It's an easy throw for a quarterback. You don't have to think about it. And I think if you can get this guy five, six, seven touches, much like the way the dolphins do with Jalen Waddle, your offense is just going to become that much more or much that much harder to defend. Greatest wide receiver of all time ran a four five nine, and no, it's not Randy Moss, uh, Marcus. Oh, yeah, he ran a yeah. four three. Okay. okay, and you say, oh well, the guys you know now are faster. Okay, well four four nine is faster than four five nine. Sure, um, four four nine is still fast enough to win plenty of battles, especially if you've got that zero to ten yard quickness. So that's my next question from you: Is he the kind of guy from zero to ten yards that can beat you know that that kind of mobility in a phone booth kind of guy? I mean, you nailed it. His 10 yard split was one, four, six, the fastest of any player in this there class, it is. right? How quickly can you win off the line of scrimmage and how quickly can you change directions? And that's what he does better than any other receiver in this class. I, because he's short and because he's a hundred under 170 pounds, I think he goes in the third round, but I will not be surprised at all. If that's somebody who has a major impact right away as a rookie. I would rather have that than the the fast 40 time go right. ahead and give him a four five nine 
with that kind of short area quickness, look, you're, when you're talking about a guy that's five foot eight, we're not expecting them. I mean, there are rare circumstances, but this is not a long strider guy. No. Okay. This is no. a guy taking shorter, choppy steps. What you want is someone that can win off the snap of the ball. You want to press them. Do they have the, the, the hand toughness to get off the press? And then they're just too quick for the corner. So did you notice anything? Did he struggle at all? Uh, either senior bowl or, or co- I know there's not a ton of press cover well, they have to face, but I, I will say at the senior bowl, he got, he saw a lot more press coverage than he's ever seen in his life. The problem is, is that he's so fast that guys can't touch him. He's yeah. so quick off yep. the line of scrimmage that yep. you make one wrong move. Boom. He is gone. And I think that's going to be his calling card in the NFL is you put him in a slot or you put him behind a bigger receiver where you can't touch him at all. He's going to be dynamic. Yeah, I don't mean to get all Dungeons and Dragons throwing out the 20 side of die here with the nerdness, but <laughs> when when you're that fast off the snap of the ball and a corner tries to get their hands on you, sometimes they end up leaning or lunging. Man, mm-hmm. if you lunge as a corner and that receiver gets a good step, it's over. It's over right there, which means the quarterback doesn't have to pat the ball. He doesn't mm-hmm. have to hold the ball. It's out and boom, and then that that five yard route can turn into ten yard route. So a couple more questions here: A, is he good after the catch? And B, where do you see him going with this size? Question. Yeah. So over the last two years, he averaged over nine yards after the catch per reception. Not not per catch. That's after the catch. I mean, that's special, phenomenal. special after the catch. And I do. I think he's going to end up third, fourth round. And if I had to pick like an ideal team put him on the 49ers and just let him run some of those routes where you just Mm. get him in space, get the ball in his hands. I think he's going to be dynamic, but I also could see, put him in Detroit, give them a little bit more speed, put him in the slot in Cincinnati and watch that offense get faster. I think he's almost a a perfect fit for anybody in the NFL. Boy, I love that 49ers call though, because you know, when you have a guy like that, that can win off the snap of the football, you don't have to pat the ball or, Mm -hmm. You throw a short route and they get you five, six yards. And next thing you know, you're at second and four. That's a win, man. That's a mm-hmm. huge win in the NFL. Um, that's great when you're changing hats at quarterback. And the exactly. 49ers may be playing multiple quarterbacks this year. We don't know when Purdy's going to be back. We think, what, maybe late November, hopefully, uh, December. Hopefully. Yeah, Trey Lance is kind of an unknown at this point. Um, uh, Sam Darnold, obviously, they picked up. They could play all three of those guys this year for all <laughs> and we they might. Know. Yeah, and they might. And so having a guy like George Kittle, for example, is a huge advantage. Having Debo Samuel, who's really tough and physical, but having a guy like this to add with those guys, mm-hmm. oh, man. Um, okay, so you say third round. Are we talking about the end of day two here? Probably. Yeah, I don't think yeah. he goes I don't think he goes inside the top 60 or 70 picks. So I think a team... Compensatory pick. Guy. Yeah, it, right. So, some team that just wants to add a little bit more juice to their offense that already has an established number one and number two receiver. I think that's where he makes a lot of sense. Do you think this is the only reason he's not being talked about? Just the size? Yeah, I just think teams, for the most part, do get scared off of, you know, sub 5'9", sub 170-pound receivers. It's just not yeah. something they're used to doing. However, this draft class is loaded with those guys. So eventually, I think the NFL is going to have to start loosening some of their thresholds at receiver. Last question. Do you like him as much as Marcus Jones last year? <sighs> Because no, that was your it, guy last year. It was. Year. I think Marcus Jones is a little bit more versatile in what he can do on well, offense, defense, and special teams. But I yeah. think I think Dell is going to have a big impact uh, right away, like Jones did. Yeah, this reminds me. We got to do a Roy Green podcast at some point. But yeah, that's for go. another day. That's our short for today. I I love the pick. Um, so watch out and see where he gets drafted. Uh, the drafts coming up here in just a couple of days, but he is at Marcus underscore Mosher on Twitter. He's a host of locked on Cowboys. I'm at Harrison NFL on Twitter. We appreciate you guys. we got a full show uh, on Wednesday and we keep doing these shorts. So I uh, hope you're liking them. Take care, everybody.